I just want to encourage you in that way. We're going to be in 1 Peter chapter 4, um, verses 9 through 11, um, as we continue in this uh, encouragement series to help you be encouraged and courageous enough to bring God glory by living boldly like Jesus, where you work, worship, live, recharge your online presence. You know, the life you put out there that you wish you had and hope other people think you actually have, you know, and you put it out there. Um, so uh, we're going to look at that. But before we go any further, let's pray uh, together. God, we are so grateful uh, for this opportunity to gather together. So we pray that you will help the scripture just as it's before us to do the work in our soul. And to find its way out once it's rooted and flourishing. Find its way out into our lives and the lives of others. May the shade of our Savior cover others in the heat of the day. And might they find the coolness of His love as they rest with us in His great embrace. We love you, Lord. We thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Think of this. What's the best gift you've ever received? Best gift you've ever received. Not just on Father's Day, but any day. Like if you went back and top 10 your greatest gifts, what would they be? And you just think of those things. Some, some people think of it in terms of holidays. Like what's your favorite holiday? Some people like birthdays. Some like anniversary. Some like Christmas. But when you're thinking about those gifts, what's the greatest gift that you've received? And I know that's hard because you might be sitting with relatives or a spouse. Like I'm going to have to say her or him because they're here. I need to think that because they're right next to me. But what are those greatest gifts? Maybe it was the first car you ever gotten, no matter how ratty it was or how awesome it was. But when you think about greatest gifts, here's what, here's what we know about gifts. Um, ignored and unopened gifts mean everyone loses out on faith, hope, and love. So when someone ignores a gift or doesn't open a gift, then, then everybody loses out on faith, hope, and love. They lose out, lose out on faith, the faith that the person who's given the gift knows me well enough to give me a good gift. The, the hope that when you go to open that gift that what's inside is going to have meaning and value and worth. And, and, and they miss out on love because it's the expression of that. That's why we give gifts because we love and care for others. Whether it's our neighbors or someone in our family or, or someone at work or someone who's retiring or someone who's moving into that next phase of life when well, we just came out of graduations. I mean, just all kinds of stuff. But whenever you ignore a gift or not open a gift, then what happens? People lose out. They lose out on experiences. They lose out on closeness. They, they lose out on um, intimacy. So, so gift giving is a great act of love, but gifts are also what? Meant to be used by others. You have to look no further than my family in my kids. Because my kids love when the other siblings get gifts because their immediate thought is, can I play with that and will I enjoy that? When they're helping their siblings make gifts for birthdays and Christmas, they're like, get this thing because I would like to play with that. That's how they do. Or, hey, let's buy something for Nana. Well, I think Nana would like this. I don't think Nana wants a Lego set of Mario. I don't think that's what Nana wants. Well, I would like for Nana to have that so I can play with Nana with that. So you guys know how the gifts work, right? They're just, there's so much joy. There's so much excitement. You're watching them opening it. I mean, it's just crazy. It's just a huge experience. So when we give gifts, that's, that's good that's being done, which leads us into this one thing that comes out of this scripture. Biblical good done in Jesus' name shows God's grace. God's grace is unmerited favor to humanity and to his kids. So when you do biblical good through the gifts God's given you in Jesus' name, that shows his grace, right? Just like when you go to a restaurant, how do we know it's somebody's birthday? They sing. How do we know it's anniversary? How do we know we're on a vacation? The, the external expression of the grace that God's given you, that unmerited favor, the gifts that he's given you in Jesus' name shows biblical good. So we use those gifts to help other people draw closer to him. In fact, the context will help us um, understand that a little bit. Um, when you use the gifts God's given you, which by the way, God has given all of you gifts. You will never meet a person on this planet who has not received at least one, most people, multiple gifts from God. And when you use that gift um, of God has given you, it draws everyone closer to God when you use it. It's like a campfire on a cold night. People just gather in. Look at that flame burn. It's so warm. And they, they cozy up their chairs. And they get their snuggies and sleeping bags. And they just gather around the warmth of the Lord as you use your gift. 
And when you use your gift and give God credit for it, it makes a huge sense in that. Now, what I want to do, I want to share with you, I'm just going to tell you these, so you're going to need to listen. You can read them on your own. But I want to talk about the gifts of the Spirit. Not fruits of the Spirit, that's different. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. But the actual gifts of the Spirit that's talked about in Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12, Ephesians 4, and 1 Peter 4 right here we're going to look at in a little bit. So the gifts that are mentioned in the New Testament are divided up into two categories. There's the speaking gifts. For all of you who love to talk a lot, right? All the ladies, it's true. You speak 30 million words more a day than the guys do. We're still grunting and sort of gesturing. That's what works for us. But then there's serving gifts. Right? There are gifts that are meant to serve. Uh, and all the gifts are meant to be under the lordship of Jesus Christ that you have. Which means you are to use the gifts as God directs and as the Lord leads. And the Holy Spirit guides. And then you're also supposed to use those gifts to serve and also to speak. So here, I'm just going to hit you with the overview. You can go back to those, the 12th chapter in Romans and 1 Corinthians if you want to pull them apart more. So... And by the way, these are all gifts that are granted by the Holy Spirit. First of all, let me just talk about the first gift before I get to the list. The first and greatest of all gifts is salvation. And I hope you know that. It is the fact that Jesus Christ died on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins and mine. Was raised from the dead on the third day according to scriptures. The greatest free gift that is ever given to mankind is Jesus Christ and his salvation. All your wrong doing, thinking, and saying forgiven in the eyes of the Lord, forgiven in the eyes of God, forgiven in the eyes of Jesus. And it is a free gift of grace through no works of your own. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to even work to keep it. God's done all that. So salvation is the first and greatest gift, which he gives. I could get into the gift of life and some of those other things, but just speaking to what this scripture references, we'll speak to those. So I'd say that if you've never confessed with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, if you've never believed in your heart that God raised you from the dead, then you're not saved. So I would say to you, do that today. And encourage all of your neighbors and friends and people you do that um, to work with as well. Alright, so here's the gifts um, out of these chapters. So the first gifts are gifts of um, what we would say is sort of these gifts of speaking. Right? They're apostleship, prophecy, teaching, evangelism, exhortation, discerning spirits, speaking in tongues, and interpreting tongues. Then there's gifts of service, which include leadership, helps, mercy, giving, faith, healing, and miracles. Those are the two major categories um, that we see those gives out. And, and the, these scriptures are very important. We serve out of love for these gifts. Have you ever received a gift because someone made them give it to you? I know you have. Because my mom's made me apologize to my little brother when we were little. It's like, you tell him you're sorry. And I said I was sorry with my words. And in my heart, wanted death and destruction for his little life. Because he told on me. I mean, that's how it is. That's one of the characteristics of the South. Man, the South people will, will treat you so nice and they'll love on you, but they'll hate you in their heart and you'll never know it. Because they're just like, we love you and they'll wave and they'll go. Right? I mean, presidents have said that about the South. I've gone down there and they were still nice to me. Even though I knew they didn't vote for me. So you've got all of that in there. So when we're talking about these gifts and when we're looking at this set, these are meant to be out of love and gifts are not to be used um, for your own gratification but God's glorification. Can I say that? And when I talk about gifts, I'm talking about things God's given you that you've not developed. These are just things you can do well because God's made you that way. You're smart, you're witty, um, any of those things that they've talked about here. Um, leadership, teaching, you're, you're an encourager, you're hospitable, um, you have the gift of faith, you're merciful, you help people, you've got leadership skills. All of those things that are, you can discern between right and wrong, all of that stuff is there from the Holy Spirit and he gives it to you in order to use to advance his kingdom. It's never meant so that you can stand on a podium, get a medal and say, look how great I am spiritually. But instead that you would step off to the side and you exalt the empty cross and the empty tomb and go look to Jesus. See the throne. He's sovereign. So we all have gifts. Met a guy this week, told me, do my face, there isn't anything special about me or anything God gave me. And I was just like, look, that's just not true. God has given you gifts. And you just start asking questions to help them to discern what those are. 
So let's dive in to this scripture here, verses 9, 10, and 11, and just sort of begin to unpack what um, 1 Peter has to say uh, about gifts. Let's just look at verse 9. Verse 9. It's interesting. Um, show hospitality to one another without grumbling. It, it, is that not an interesting verse? When he's about to kind of lay out the gifts and, and kind of what they are, he starts here with show hospitality to one another without grumbling. And why does grumbling stifle hospitality? Because it reveals the heart is decided it doesn't want to love. So when you talk to someone about using their gifts, you have to start here with the heart. If you want to live for Jesus, you've got to want to love for Jesus. You can't just do the duty. Just bang out the responsibility. Just figure out and, and, and hold a place in the kingdom and go, well, I'm existing. No. He says, if you're going to show hospitality, which by the way, is for everyone to do, to love one another. We talked about that last week. To love one another, then you do so without grumbling. Because if you do it with grumbling, you've already just taken all the power out of that gift that God can use. Right? If you don't care about a person, they're going to know that. Their spirit's going to sense that you don't generally want their best. That you're doing it because you have to, not because you get to. So you can understand why God's like, look, you've got to show hospitality to one another without grumbling. Your heart's got to be in the right place before you use that gift that I've given you. And, and many of you have multiple gifts. So it's like, get your heart right, then you can help others get in the right place as well. And I, I love that verse because hospitality only happens when the heart fully acts out in love. So you want to know what real love is? You want to demonstrate what love is? Hospitality is that. And that's what he wants for us to go, oh man, I've got to get up and do this now. Or, oh man, I've got to read my Bible. Or, oh man, I've got to live for Jesus. You know, when you're being hospitable, you're there. You're just whatever I can do to serve, wherever I can get to help, however I can engage you and help you draw closer to the Lord. So I love verse 9 because that's where it takes us. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling. So as people are using their gifts, like, man, I'm just going to use it to show love. Whatever your gift is or gifts from the Lord that we mentioned, use those in a hospitable way. Do it without grumbling. Make sure that your heart's in it because that's where God can flourish. Look at verse 10. Verse 10. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace. Man, there's so much here. First of all, everyone's received a gift. Right? When you're saved, you, it's the gift of the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of you. The gift of salvation. You already, you already know um, where heaven is. I mean, you just know where it's going. It's, it's in your heart. You're, you're going to be there. So he says, each one's received a gift. So here's the good news. Every person that you meet, um, every Christian that exists has a gift from God. One of these are on the list. Now, you may not know what that is. I can understand that. Maybe you've not really prayed about it and asked God, God, what are my gifts and, that you've given me and how can I use them? But what does he say with everyone that has a gift? You use it to what? Serve one another. That's the goal of your gift and your existence, to serve what did Jesus model for us? To serve. Even came as a, just a little vulnerable, precious baby in the manger. So as each has received a gift, which you all have. And I love how Peter just, he doesn't assume it. He knows it to be fact. You all have a gift. Use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace. So God's like, look, my grace is so infinite and it's so unique that every different person on the planet is going to have a unique combination of these gifts. And they're going to be meant to be used out for others. So some people know them and they hide them, right? The ignored gift. I know God's given me a gift, but I'm just not going to use it. Others, they just, they, they just don't know it's there. They, they're not opening it. They don't want to. They're afraid what that may mean for their life. How it may change relationships. But God's like, look, be good stewards. What's a good steward do? They care well for things. So this good stewardship says, look, you've already been given these gifts. It's time to use them for his good and very grace. We talked about salvation, the free gift of God, and that is eternal life. And the reason that God gives you grace, and that's what's so cool, right? Grace is God's unmerited favor. It's not like you did something really great and God goes, you've earned gift level two. 
Now your gift level 10 because you did such good things. Instead, he says here, as he gives out in his very grace. What you have from God is because he loves you and wants you to be a part of his plan. That's why he gives you these gifts so you can come alongside to get you off the proverbial sidelines and the bench and get you into the game and go, hey, let's play and use this. Or if you're already in life using your gifts to use it for him so that others might be saved and others might be able to make disciples to bring him glory, praise, and credit. So your gifts have a great purpose wherever you go and wherever you find yourself. God has graciously given to us good so that you can serve him and help others know his excellent plan. And why is it so important to realize that the giftedness you have is from God? Because when you realize that it's from God, you'll start to live more courageously. So if God's given me this, and if God's still on the throne, and if God is sovereign over everything, then what do I have to fear? What do I have to lose? And you can live like there's no tomorrow, as the Bible says. You can go out and just go, man, I'm going to live for the Lord. I'm going to date for the Lord. I'm going to be married for the Lord. I'm going to serve for the Lord. I'm going to flip pizzas and burgers and analyze files and enter data and computers for the Lord. I'm going to do everything for him because he's given me these graces. I know I'm going to heaven. What do I have to fear? Take my life and send me to heaven? Yes, please. To the best place ever? Sure. Why not? Because I love the Lord? I'm parent for the Lord. I use all these gifts that he has for the Lord. In fact, in the fruition of that relationship is the only way you'll ever know fullness and contentment. Whenever you use the gift that God's given you or those multiple gifts any other way than God wants, you will have discontentment. Because you will know you were using that thing for the wrong reasons to hurt and to harm or just for your own selfish ends. It will never fulfill. Like, why do I have this? Why did God give me this ability? Why can I do this this way? And God's like, it's for me so that people will be saved and people will become more like Jesus Christ. That's the whole point. When we realize it comes from him, we can live courageously because we don't have to worry about the outcomes. Look at verse 11. Look at verse 11. This is where we kind of we get some of the categories, uh, sort of divided up by first uh, by Peter here in these. Whoever speaks is one who speaks um, oracles of God. Whoever serves, remember the two categories, as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything, everything. God may be glorified through Jesus Christ to bring uh, uh, to him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Wow. So here's what we see. So whoever speaks and uses their gift, um, where does that guidance come from? Where does that divine truth come from? It comes from God. That's what it says. Not stuff that you make up or you think's good. Not homemade scriptures, but it comes from God. And whoever serves, who serves? By the strength that God gives. So does God ever run out of truth? No. Does God ever get weak and not have strength? No. So do you ever have to stop speaking and ever have to stop serving? No. Why? Because you're just getting that from the Lord. I don't know, some continuous IV drip. Some continuous plugged into the Holy Spirit to just have that source of power that is always running. So that when you're weak, great. Because then he's strong in you. When you don't know what to say, finally, you're ready to be used. Because he can give you the words that you need to share with those that you are awkward around. Or don't want to share, or haven't shared, or are afraid of things are going to happen. In order that everything that God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Here's what I love about that. Is this gives us the why behind all of our gifts. Why is that? Remember when Jesus said he's the way, the truth, and the life. I mean, he wasn't just like, I need to make a good bumper sticker and t-shirt logo for the future. I'm just going to say this. No, he says it because why? It's the truth. So when you live out your gifts and we observe actions, we always ask, why is it that way? Why does everything revolve around the sun? Because God made it that way. Why are you being so nice to me at work when I'm not nice to you? Because God has made me that way. How do you always know good and wise decisions to make in hard, difficult situations? Because this is what God's gifted me to do. And why do you do that? The why is always pointing to Jesus Christ. So that you might be more like him and you might be saved. The reason I'm living my gifts out loud in love is so that you will come to that same love in Jesus Christ. So we are a Christian all the time. You should never turn that off. You should be the same intensity of Christian 
that you are in worship as you are um, at the lunch counter with your friends or co-workers. You should always be a Christian all the time wherever you go. There should never be an off switch. You shouldn't even turn the dial down. In fact, I would say to you that maybe in some places you need to turn that dial up more than you do even here. So he's like, what? In order that he might be glorified. Remember, we talk about that. We exist, we as a humanity, we as Chapel Bay Church exist to bring God glory and make disciples. What does it mean to bring God glory? That he gets the praise and credit. <clears throat> so you have to answer the question, why are you doing these things? Because I love God and God loves you. Why do these things exist? Because look what it says at the end of that verse. <clears throat> to him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Those things go to him. Who decides how the gift you have is used? God the Father, Jesus the Savior and King, and the Holy Spirit who guides and comforts. That's who decides to use the gift that you've used. I've seen a lot of people sell their souls for what the world has to offer for this momentary issue. And you can look at them and just know, man, God gave you that gift to use in the kingdom. But you're using it in the world. You're not using it for God. You're using it for your own personal gain. Your sharpness of mind, your witty humor, your ability to lead others, to be able to discern right and wrong where you've twisted that to manipulate others. I run into people all the time like that. Where God's like, here's what I've given you to use into the kingdom. And they're like, I'd rather trade that for what the world can give me now. And that's the great battle. We talked about that two weeks ago. Your flesh and your spirit are at war with each other. And your flesh is going to say, do less of Jesus. And your soul's going to say, be more like it. So whatever of these gifts or combinations you have, you need to know that it's God who uses those. It's, it's our role, your role, to surrender and just be submissive. God, this is what I can do. This is who I am. This is what you've given me. This is where you've placed me. This is what I can do. Because there are depths to who God is that you can't swim. There are heights that you can't climb to. But you need God to submarine you down into the depths. You need God to rocket ship you up to where he is. To help you to find that strength that you're going to need for that next phase of life. You need to use your gifts to serve him. And it doesn't matter if you're 95 or 5. God's made you and put gifts inside of you to use for his kingdom. And not just inside these walls, but out in the community as well. So when we look at these messages and we think about these texts, what's something we can do to become more like Jesus? And we're going to talk about each of these. Let's, let's just look at your worship for a second. Your worship of God. Pray to know and refine his gift um, to you. So if, if you know what your gifts are... That's great. You need to pray for refinement. God, how do I use my gifts every day in everyday situations? And then ask him to refine you in that gift. Ask God for direction and deployment of how to use his grace gift. So if I went around to all of you and said, just tell me one gift that God's given you. Could you say that? Could you tell me what that is? Because you should know that. Or have uh, at least be able to lean into it a little bit. Because you all have a gift that God's given you. At least one. Most of you multiple. And then ask him to refine that gift. To help you to see um, how to use that in all areas of your life. Where you work, worship, live, and play. To refine that for um, direction uh, and deployment. To use those um, that are there. God doesn't give you gifts to be ignored or to be unopened. He has given you these gifts to use and to share with other people. And that's the best kind of thing, right? The best kind of thing. When we're out in community, we already saw this in scriptures in verse 10. Steward well what belongs to God. Steward well what belongs to God. You have been given gifts not for the advancement of your gratification, but for God's glorification. See what that means? You, you exist and have what you have so that God gets praise and credit by the way that you live. The people would be like, praise the Lord for your faithfulness. And you may think, oh man, some of the people around Nathan would never do that. Not true. You can read in the Old Testament and the New, people that hated 
God and hated Jesus. But when they saw what God did through his people, still gave him praise and credit. You can look at Pharaoh. You can look at the world emperors. You can even look at the Philistines. I mean, I could go on and on about people who are just like, we got to praise, right? Look at Nebuchadnezzar. They throw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fiery furnace. That dude was worshiping all kinds of other gods. In fact, they're in the furnace of fire because they wouldn't worship false gods in the king. And he still says, guess what, land? We're all going to worship this God that they follow. Because we saw a man in the fire with them that looked like the Son of God. He's the one. So even rulers can put a decree out among their nations and say, this God's legit and this God's real. So don't tell me your boss at work isn't going to go over well with that. Don't tell me your neighbor or your spouse or your stepkids or stepgrandkids aren't going to want to be able to hear about Jesus. There's nothing you can do. That's not true. There's no place that the Holy Spirit cannot penetrate should God send them. There's no off limits to God. And you use your gifts, it opens that door. That's what it does. Why is grandma so nice? Why is uncle so and so so nice? Why is my noble this way? Why, why are they always trying to push us that way? Because we know where truth lies. And you don't miss that opportunity. So steward well what belongs to God. Think even more so how you can publicly use your gifts in order to point to Jesus. Not to you, not for merit badges on the sash, but for Jesus so that they'll see him. So when you're in our community, uh, just, just do that well. Just bring Jesus into things uh, quickly. Now, when you're in service, um, seek to serve others for God. I, I love that because when it talks about gifts, there's like no chance for Peter to allow us to get self-centered. Did you notice this in scriptures? It's always like for one another, for each other. So when, when you've got these gifts, there's no podium standing for Peter. He's just like, boom, here it is. Here's your gifts, and it's for everybody else. Now, you might feel good about what you can do, but this is so that others will know how great God is. I mean, think about that story. Think about your story. There's, there's no reason on the planet why you should have the combination and gifts and abilities that you have. There's no reason from the small town that you came from, the big town that you came from, those things. That, why would God choose you, right? What does the Bible say? What is man, God, that you are mindful of him? He's nothing that you would be mindful of him. But God gives you these gifts and gives you these abilities. He chose you first. That's awesome. That's incredible. You are the one that he has chosen to give these things to so that you might live that out. What an awesome responsibility. What a great joy to go, God, God goes, this combination is yours and yours alone. You know that, right? No one else ever to live will have that exact combination that you have. That's how much God loves you. He's giving you one chance, giving your life one purpose and one meaning to live that out. And then that's gone. There'll be other people to come along. Man, I think that's incredible. So when you serve others, do it so that when you serve, it draws them closer um, to God. I tell stories about that all the time, so I won't belabor that point anymore. But it's just, you have so many opportunities um, to bring people in. And I would say this, um, gift guide. Gift guide others to God because you're thinking about multiplication. Uh, there are a lot of people out there who know that they have gifts. And they're using their gifts. And you can see their gifts. But they're not using their gifts for the Lord. They're using it for themselves or for other things first. And maybe not even bad things, just not God first, which then makes it bad. So gift guide others to God, which means let the example of your life lead others to God by the way of Jesus through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Remember when we talked about your actions help people to answer the question why? I mean, they just do that all the time. Why do you say the things you do? What are you, what are you doing what you do? Then you can tell them. And you start pointing them to Jesus. Because this is how Christians live. Right? We're in the world, but not of the world. You know what that means, right? We're not, we're, we're not wearing camouflage. Does that make sense? We're not hiding in the, in the deer blinds of the world to where no one can really see us except for the occasional puff of smoke that comes out that little slit as we fire a shot into the world and go, Jesus, no. We're in the world. We're just covered in bright orange for the Lord. We're just out there going, here we are. Here's what we're doing. We're living for him. And I would just encourage you to live that way. So let's look at the one thing one last time. Let's listen to the one thing one last time. Biblical good done in Jesus' name shows God's grace. Where is God? 
in our country? Where is God in Surf City? He's being hidden in the hearts and minds of Christians. It doesn't matter that there's only 17% of us in Surf City that claim Jesus as Lord and Savior. It doesn't matter. All it takes is one. All it takes is one. But we need what our state needs, what our country needs, what the world needs, what your neighbor needs, as you using your gifts in the name of Jesus Christ for the furtherance of the kingdom. And I don't care if you're retired because you don't retire from Jesus. I don't care if you're in the middle of life and God, I got so much to do to get my life in order so that my kids are going to be okay. That's not going to fly with Jesus. He left everything to come here for us because we couldn't go there. So what you do is you look at your life and go, what are my gifts? What has God given me from those lists that Nathan had? You can go back later online and, and listen to them slowly. As we just go to Romans 12, go to Ephesians 4, go to 1 Corinthians 12 and start using your gifts that way. And bringing it all in. And isn't that cool? God's like, look, I made you this way. I put you this way. Now we're just going to put it in the right hands. That's how it's, it's true. It's really true. You put a paintbrush in my hand, stick figures. That's what you're getting. You know, like those ones they put on the back of minivans. Like, here's our family and our 18 dogs. Stick figures. But man, you put that paintbrush in the hand of a skilled painter. Awesome. Awesome. I was just sitting with uh, my daughter Lydia the other day and she's like, Dad, draw me this. And I drew it. She's like, no, really, draw me this. <laughs> I just can't draw it. But man, you get that in my hands. Now imagine your life in the hands of the skilled creator. The one who knits you together. The one who knows which of your toes are a little too long. You know what I'm saying? This guy knows you. And he's like, look, I've given you a purpose Let's get after this. And it's all for his goodness and his glory. Will it be hard? Yeah, it's going to be hard. Will you want to give up? Sure. You want to give in? You're going to be tempted to. But God's like, what? Where does the strength come from? Verse 11, not your strength. Where does the guidance come from? Not your wisdom, which I am so glad. Because God knows everything. He is everywhere and he's all powerful. That's who I want to trust in. So here's what's going to happen. Some of you here today or listening um, later online have to answer the great question. Have you received the greatest gift that is in Jesus Christ? Are you saved? And if you are saved, other people should know that about you. And it should not be they're just a good person. They should know you're saved. But if you're not saved, it's, it's super easy. God, God doesn't make it hard. He desires everyone to be saved. You know that, right? Everyone to be saved. You just confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart God raised him from the dead. You'll be saved. That's all you need to know to leave someone to Jesus. You can tell them John 3.16. They probably see it in his sporting events. You can tell them Ephesians 2.8 and 9. Let them know that. That it's no works of their own. They don't have to work to be saved. So if you've not received that gift... That's the gift you need to receive and actually open today. If you are a Christian, you have received that, then it's, it's joyous time. Because as the Holy Spirit came and dwelt at you at the point of salvation, you would then be able to understand the purpose of salvation. In fact, even those gifts that you have and you realize you have before salvation draw you into God is. Because why can you do certain things better than others and they can't? There's no rhyme and reason to it until it's under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So this is the answer to every question. 